The world is facing a global problem. It's one of the first global problems that it's faced and it is going to have to do something about it. 85% of the world's energy comes from burning fossil fuels. Because of the burning of fossil fuels, carbon dioxide is put into the atmosphere. At the moment, in 2014, 32 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide are put into the atmosphere each year. The effect of this increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has been to raise the temperature. The temperature over the last 70 or 80 years or so has been raised by about 0.8 degrees centigrade. Now 0.8 might not sound very much but it actually is quite a large amount. It gives more energy to the atmosphere, gives more energy to the oceans but the, because the oceans respond with an increased temperature and what that means is that effects in the oceans and the atmospheres increase in intensity and also in variability. So we have more intense storms, as we've seen over England, for example, in uh, February uh, 2014. We have more hurricanes that uh, hit uh, America, as we saw the terrible hurricane that hit uh, New York. We have heat uh, waves as we saw in uh, over Moscow in uh, 2010 and over uh, Europe, Western Europe in uh, 2003. This is all due to an increased demand in world energy. More and more fossil fuels are being uh, burnt, more carbon dioxide is coming into uh, the atmosphere and this is likely to lead to a catastrophe in something like maybe 30, 40 years. It will also lead to increased temperature of the ocean, which will raise the level of uh, the ocean and lead to flooding. Much of Bangladesh, London, low-lying areas could be flooded, leading to many people having to leave their homelands and go, go where? The question is which countries would take in those people whose ha lands have been flooded? What can you do about it? There are really uh, a few possibilities and these are being hotly debated by politicians, scientists and the man in the street at the moment. One is we could stop using as much energy we could stop burning fossil fuels. It's unlikely that the world will slow down in its ever voracious devouring of uh, energy. That has increased in the last 50 years, it's unlikely to uh, decrease. We might find something else other than fossil fuels to burn, another way of finding energy. For example, getting energy from the sun. The sun produces at least 10,000 times more energy than we use, but we don't know how to capture and store that energy yet. We don't have efficient uh, batteries. The other thing we could do is called geoengineering. We could change aspects of uh, the Earth. So for example, we uh, might uh, release aerosols into the atmosphere, maybe something like 10 kilometers, about the height at which uh, planes uh, fly. We'd release sulfate aerosols mimicking volcanic eruptions which reflect the incident sunlight. The problem with this style of uh, solving is that it could go wrong. We may find that we put far too much uh, uh, aerosol into uh, the atmosphere and the temperature goes down by five degrees. We just don't know enough about the reflective uh, possibilities. We could put mirrors, uh, as has been suggested. They have the same problem, though they might be easier to recover if we find that we put too many uh, um, mirrors. 
And the third uh, possibility is that we could store the carbon dioxide that we at the moment put out into the atmosphere. As I said earlier, we put out 32 billion tonnes and if we stored something like half of it, 16 billion tonnes at the moment, uh, into the uh, earth, that might be a, a solution. This is an area that I and a number of others have worked on intensively, looking at what are the properties and what is the safety, what are the possibilities associated with storage or sequestration of the carbon dioxide. The first thing is, in order to store the carbon dioxide efficiently, we'd have to store it in a liquid-like form because that takes very much less uh, space. In order to get it into a liquid-like form, we'd have to compress it. And we'd compress it first on the surface of the earth with machinery, and that takes some energy also. And then we'd pump it down at least a kilometre below the surface of the earth. Beyond a kilometre's depth, there is a phase transition, a change from the gaseous state of the carbon dioxide to the, solid, to the liquid state of uh, the uh, carbon dioxide. And then we could store it in the porous reservoirs that exist uh, at that depth in the earth. There are many very large porous reservoirs. Some of them contain oil. Some of them used to contain oil because we've taken them out. And we know that there's easily enough space uh, below Europe, America, China for us to store the uh, carbon dioxide and store it there until well after the fossil fuel era is over. So maybe a few thousand, maybe even tens of thousands of years. And the questions that uh, somebody like me, a scientist who's interested in fluid flow, looks at is how fast will the carbon dioxide spread as it's pumped in, let's say, one and a quarter kilometers uh, below the surface of the Earth? Is there any possibility that will leak? Will it find previous faults, geological faults, through which it could first seep out and then, especially if it's not buried too deep, it might go back to being a gas. Once it's a gas, it is really very uh, dangerous because it takes up a large uh, volume or increases the pressure considerably, depending just what uh, the constraints are. And then if the carbon dioxide leaked out into the surface, uh, there would be the big problem that it's heavier than air, so it would flow across uh, the land and kill people and animals, as it has in the past. There have been uh, uh, eruptions from lakes of carbon dioxide that killed uh, hundreds of uh, animals and uh, something like 80 uh, people around Lake uh, Kivu uh, in uh, Africa. Another possibility is that the liquid-like carbon dioxide, which spreads out into salty water, which uh, is in the pore space between these uh, rocks that look a little bit uh, like a sponge. Another possibility is that the carbon dioxide can combine with the liquid, and it's a trick of chemistry, that the combination is heavier than either the carbon dioxide or the water. And if that happens, then it falls down to the bottom of the uh, reservoir, and then it's safe. Then there can be no uh, leakage anymore. So there are interesting uh, problems, uh, which I've looked at both experimentally and theoretically, of how rapidly will this uh, mixture take uh, place? How rapidly will it then uh, fall uh, down? And that needs some new sorts of uh, mathematics applied to uh, fluid flow and has been uh, very uh, interesting. Is this just imaginative thinking or is it a real possibility? Good question. Well, it's definitely a real possibility in that there have been some field trials and we're storing at the moment in 2014 something like seven or eight million tons of carbon dioxide each year. But let me remind you, it's 32 billion tons that we put out into the atmosphere. 
Some of these experiments have been in the North Sea in Sleipner, where a million tons of carbon dioxide have been stored since 1996 each year. Some experiments are in Australia, some in the United States. And what we need to do is increase that seven, 10 million ton storage to 16 billion tons. That's quite an increase but it's also something that can be done effectively and could be a profitable industry. Just like the oil industry is extremely profitable, so the sequestration industry can be profitable. The interesting difference is that the oil industry started small and the demand was small. And then as it became nice to drive cars, more and more petrol was wanted, more and more cars uh, wanted the petrol and supply and demand increase together. This is a very different economic situation in which the demand is huge, the supply is small. We have only seven million stored at the moment. So it's an interesting question how this is going to happen. It's a question that the politicians need to look into, but scientifically it's very exciting. How do you store carbon dioxide? How do you mix it with water? How do you assure the public that it's safe and it's a doable technique.